afternoon. In this existential age of climate change, when I mention technology and nature, most of you will probably think of how the advancement in technology destroys nature. Because since the Industrial Revolution, humans have largely viewed nature as something to be tamed, fixed, ignored, or even overwritten. We've gone through different stages of engineering. The age of gravity, the age of heat, the age of electromagnetism, and now the age of information, transitioning to the age of system. Throughout history, we've solved technical problems for making things bigger or more energy and resource intensive. The Wright brothers invented the first plane in 1903. It was it only required a nine kilowatt meter motor. Sorry, it only required a nine kilowatt motor because it was, it was only eight meters long. The groundbreaking Douglas DC3 in 1936 was twice as long and used two radial piston engines, which were a hundred times more powerful. Fast forward to the iconic Boeing 737. It was powered by two 11 megawatt engines and it measures 36 meters in length. The evolution of airplane has clearly shown the trend of how we innovate. And it all stems from the tremendous rise in human demands. Or rather, human desires. For better or for worse, we have gotten some results. But a few centuries of heatless consumption have left us near ecological and manufacturing dead ends. We are approaching certain limits of engineering. There's no more low hanging fruits. The problems left to be solved in medicine, in computing, in architecture are complicated and intractable. Plus, we're running out of raw materials. Global warming's devastating effects are beginning to manifest. This brute force method that has gotten us so far is now failing us. Luckily, humans are competitive, and this inherent nature of ours always pushes us to find new solutions. So a potential way forward is to start looking at how nature succeeds, where we have not. We need to dig deeper into nature, to observe and learn from the environment around us. And only by actively seeking for this hidden connection between the natural world and the man-made world, would be able to create a sustainable environment that allows humans to flourish, as nature has done, for four billion years. So a bit of background by myself. Personally, I live in the densest city in the world. And I can tell you, as a Hong Konger, that on the first day of school, the thing that scares me the most is not realizing I haven't done any of my homework, but rather, the heavy traffic. My home is just 10 kilometers away from school, but it will take more than two hours for me to get there. Scary, isn't it? But remember, today, it is not just about us. The more time people spend in traffic, the more carbon dioxide is emitted to the atmosphere. Now, since that last year, we've wasted more than a million collective years staring at each other's taillights. We've also emitted more than a million tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere compared to an ideal world where there's no traffic jam at all. Now the question is, does this ideal world exist? Well, if you actually think about it, Earth is home to another great commuter, whose population numbers in a hundred trillion. They have a similar day like us, set off in the morning alongside thousands of their neighbors, moving out and back in, in neat little lines to provide for their families. Crowdings, bottlenecks, gridlocks, in fact, yes, ants. They face the same traffic challenges too. But they never get into traffic jam. Why is that? First, distributed intelligence. An individual ant wanders around until it stumbles upon food. But when several foraging ants find the same bit of food, they each lays a trail or a pheromone trail back to the nest so that the other ants can find it. Since pheromones evaporate over time, they stay freshest on the quickest routes. This route in, in turn becomes the most attractive to the other ants, who then reinforce the trail with their own pheromones. Second reason, perfect coordination. We humans have slow reaction time and short attention spans. 
But like us, ants can maintain the same distance between the ants in front and the ants at back, accelerating and decelerating as a group at a time. But in both ways, superb communication skills are the key in solving the traffic problem. As such, a structurally systemized solution is needed, which is exactly what self-driving cars are about. Their lightspeed inter-vehicle communication can be used for broadcasting their ongoing traffic conditions. They can be programmed easily to stay in the middle and accelerate simultaneously. Sooner or later, traffic lights are no longer even needed. Yay! So now that we have solved the problem on the road, why don't we turn our attention to the sky? Drones have been increasingly popular in recent years. They are typically used for aerial photography or videography, as well as surveillance or remote observation of hazardous environments. Despite the incredible things that drones can achieve, there isn't much groundbreaking research in drone development. In fact, its progress appears to have stalled after hitting a big roadblock, which is a short mission life. Even the best consumer drone in the current market can only stay in air for 36 minutes. Drone flight times are so short because there needs to be an intricate balance between the power and the weight of the drone. Also, drones are extremely energy-hungry devices that require an immense amount of power. Well, if you consider all of the complicated software programming as well as the hardware that drones are running while stabilizing in air, it is fascinating that they can actually take off. However, all these justifications seem to point towards battery as the ultimate limiting factor. In fact, numerous researchers have been trying to break this bottleneck by reprogramming smarter batteries, replacing lithium-ion batteries with lithium polymer batteries, or even providing courses on how to take care of this delicate battery to maximize its life cycle and to improve its efficiency. Well, of course, all of these efforts are important in drone development. However, what is important to note is that a stronger battery is not the only solution. Maybe you haven't noticed, but birds do not spend most of their time flying. Instead, they perch and rest on branches, rooftops, cars, for a free ride. And this is exactly how drones can get through the hurdles. This was the research published by Stanford University five months ago. The drone first identifies suitable purchases and then executes low-speed controlled landing maneuvers on arbitrary surfaces by engaging the miniature spines on small asperities. It then clings and crawls to reorient for a better view while conducting the surveillance. Finally, it can launch itself off the surface with a jump. Yes, drones can be exactly just like birds. Funny, isn't it? After all those times burying ourselves with the chemical work of batteries, we've missed the most fundamental rule of flying, which is, don't fly too much. <laughs> so now that we have examined the impacts of um, battle inspiration on both the ground and in the air, let me introduce the ocean's greatest and most majestic creature, the humpback whales. As we all know, if one thinks to move efficiently through air or water, they have to be smooth or streamlined. This rule is followed by dolphins, jets, and even Olympic swimmers. However, if you look closely to humpback whales, their large knobby edge flippers defy this pattern. Flipper bumps, also called turbicles, are unique to humpbacks. And in fact, they were thought to be an anomaly until biologist Frank Fish discovered that they were exceedingly aerodynamic. Now I'd like to invite all of you to put out your fists and observe this demonstration. The bumps on the edge of the fin channels the air into narrower streams. This creates a higher air velocity in the channel uh, below the fin increasing lift. Normally, when you increase lift, there's greater airflow at the wingtip, which increases drag. However, the presence of the bumps concentrates the air in the channel between the bumps, which decreases drag. So, we can get the best of both worlds. 
increasing lift while minimizing drag. No wonder humpback whales are the most maneuverable large whales. No wonder that despite their bulkiness, they can capture larger, faster prey. They're the only known organisms to take advantage of this turbicle effect. Quoting humpback whales' life motto, don't go with the flow, be the flow. So, what can scientists do with this information? Increase lift, reduce drag, preventing stall, minimizing noise. It will take at least an hour for me to rave about its innumerable insights. Well, of course. Essentially, humpback whales have opened a new exciting door in the field of aerodynamics, which can be applied to aircraft, watercraft, ventilation fans, windmills, industrial turbines, wind turbines, etc., etc. Observing ants to solve the traffic problem. Mimicking birds to redesign drones. Referencing humpback whale's fin to remodel the wind turbines. These are just a few prime examples of bio-inspired technology. We learned from and emulated mother nature. But as we get better and better at optimizing machines ourselves, we start to forget that nature was and should always be our true teacher. I mean, who would pay attention to small ants when we are able to electrify a double-deck plane? Who would care about bumps on wells when NASA is soon launching the new, noiseless, faster-than-sound aircraft? We, humans, always naively, to think, always naively think that we're at the top of the creative pyramid. Every day, we have these new, exciting, cutting-edge technologies that are driving humanity forward. But to remind you, the only thing more dangerous than ignorance is arrogance. Gecko's feet sticks to the walls without the need for any adhesives. Snakes can fly simply by rearranging their ropey bodies. Hummingbirds can move in all directions just by tilting their wings. It is important to know that nature has, surpass, has been surpassing us at all times. With a four billion year head start, it has succeeded human ingenuity beyond our wildest imagination. But the irony is that climate change is contributing to the mass extinction of certain species, which might hold answers for a cleaner, more sustainable future. But for now, if we pay attention to what ends, birds, and whales are telling us, actively shining a light on our connections with nature, we might be able to find a way to save them and ourselves before it is too late. Thank you.